The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. You can earn continuing education credits through ACI's online CEU program. Visit www.concrete.org to register. ACI conventions provide an opportunity for networking and for keeping up to date with the latest in concrete technology and practices. Good morning. The first presentation on finding analysis for circular and rectangular concrete columns in tall buildings. Our first speaker is here, Ahmad uh, Abdel Fattah, just finished his uh, PhD in Kansas State uh, University. Congratulations, and we are waiting to hear from you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, the whole purpose of this um, study is to introduce uh, or plot the uh, confined interaction uh, diagram and use and adjust that with some factors and use the adjusted interaction diagram in design uh, columns in lower stories uh, for tall buildings uh, as opposed to the uh, traditionally uh, design interaction diagram that is used by the engineer for the same purpose. Uh, so the first, uh, the first section of the presentation will address the confined interaction diagram development, uh, while the second uh, will uh, deal with the, some design of columns with the adjusted confined interaction diagram. So the concrete confined model uh, that has been used in this uh, study uh, first, we introduce the eccentricity as a main parameter in uh, plotting the stress-strain curve uh, for uh, the concrete. So the first case uh, with the fully confined, uh, uh, fully confined uh, section uh, that has a concentric axial force, and the other case for the unconfined, uh, the unconfined case is uh, fully uh, addressed in more than 20 successful. Uh, well-established uh, confined models. Uh, while the case in between when the column is subjected to eccentric force or it has a combination of axial force and, and, uh, and bending moment is not addressed in any uh, model. So this case is it's always having, a, or we can call it as a partially confined uh, case when, the, when the, the section is exposed to uh, compression is having compression zone and tension zone. So the as the definition goes, that the confinement is always associated with the compression. So the case is partially confined, and this is, as I said, is not addressed in any available confinement model in the literature. So <coughs> based on that, uh, we introduced some, uh, several uh, interaction uh, stress strain curves uh, that. Uh, lies between that lie between the upper confined, uh, fully confined curve and the unconfined curve. Uh, the model that we used here is Mander model. So we used uh, the unconfined and the confined as an upper and lower bounds for the uh, for our eccentric model. And then based on the eccentricity that the column sees or the section sees, uh, <coughs> the stress. The, the ultimate stress and the ultimate strain is reduced gradually with increasing the eccentricity uh, to be FCC bar and the corresponding strain and the ultimate strain. So in case of the uh, eccentricity increases, the uh, peak strength decreases along with the uh, ultimate strain and this is the first safety protection that we take into account in order to plot a safe and conservative interaction diagram. 
uh, and to uh, translate that into a mathematical expression, we run the analysis for the circular cross-section columns, independent from the rectangular columns. As it always that the circular cross-section is smooth and easy to predict. So in this graph, the compression area ratio to the cross-section is plotted against the normalized eccentricity. And uh, we can see from that graph that the, the compression area reduces linearly with increasing the eccentricity. So to predict or to, uh, to predict the value of the F FCC prime, the partial confined strength, uh, partial peak confined strength, it's a mix between the peak confined strength and the unconfined strength with uh, a coefficient of the, uh, as a function of the normalized eccentricity. This is a case uh, that is plotted using the previous equation for eccentricities ranging from 0 up to 10 inches uh, for a real case and uh, you can see here the differences between or the, the stress strain curves are equidistant from each other and the, the, it, it reduces gradually very small step from when we move from an uh, eccentric value to the following one. Uh, while when it comes to the rectangular columns, the same uh, relations uh, are plotted with different aspect ratio for columns, for uh, like uh, having a uh, one-to-one -one ratio, um, square columns, and then aspect ratio two to one, three to one, four to one. And we can see that uh, there is um, a pattern going on uh, between the two relations that they are inversely proportional to each other. And here the eccentricity is normalized by the square root of the area cross section, BH. So we gathered all the data and replot them discreetly in one graph and then a curve fit that and the value of the of the uh, of the, this curve or the equation is equal to the CR CR the uh, CR equation. So I, I refer to this equation as CR, while the other one is just the E, e equation. And then uh, by plotting a case using the this equation, FCC prime as a function of CR as opposed to the a previous function is just normalized in simplicity, you can see here the difference it's very clear that uh, there is a huge jump when we move from zero eccentricity up to one, up to one, and then the space or the jump decreases gradually. But up to 10, 10, 10 eccentricities, you can see that the curve is going close to the unconfined, which is the case for the rectangular cross uh, The numerical procedure uh, for uh, predicting the uh, uh, interaction, the confined interaction diagram <clears throat> is an iterative process uh, by throwing a small delta P, a small value of forces uh, to the section and uh, seek equilibrium uh, and uh, also the flow chart or the procedure is aiming to locate or positioning the neutral axis, uh, the elastic centroid <clears throat> and and uh, seek equilibrium between the applied forces and the internal forces <coughs> and keep increasing the forces with the delta P that is applied initially and use the section properties from each step as an initial step in this following procedure, in the following step. Uh, and uh, eventually the, uh, the, uh, the procedure always check for uh, that the extreme fiber compression is within is less than the epsilon CU bar that's found from the, from the eccentric uh, stress strain curve, or it checks for that the steel doesn't exceed the 0.05, the tension of steel. So by zooming in and have more details, first, initially, the uh, section properties are calculated, the axial rigidity, the flexure rigidity, the moment of axial rigidity, and the position of the geometric centroid and the elastic centroid to the cross-section. And, <clears throat> and uh, inputting a small value of P and knowing the eccentricity and knowing the alpha that we are working with. The alpha is the angle that relates 
the MX to MY, so we first determine what, which plane are we interested in. So this is as like a target uh, process that we know exactly where are we going, uh, which, which plane that we are aiming for, and then which uh, eccentricity uh, that uh, relates the P, the, uh, the forces to the moment through a, a constant eccentricity, which is represented by this angle and apply small, this a small amount of force. Whenever we see the equilibrium, we go to the following step and so forth till we hit the outer interaction diagram. <coughs> and then we transfer the moment to an elastic centroid using this equations, these equations, and the, this is our diagram showing how the moment is transferred. And the purpose of that is to use the uh, um, generalized moment of area uh, matrix that relates the P and the moment about X and Y to the uh, strain and the uh, curvature X and Y. But when we transfer the moment to the, in the position of the inelastic centroid, uh, we omit the values of the moment of axial rigidity here. So the, the equations becomes decoupled and then we can calculate uh, the, the strain and the curvature directly from the P and TMX and TMY. When it comes to the uniaxial force, which is the case for the circular cross-section, uh, uh, this matrix boils down to two by two matrix as the, the existence, because of the existence of one moment uh, curvature, or the one moment about the one axis. Uh, then it calculates the curvatures the strain at the, the position of the elastic centroid or the position of the geometric centroid and then calculate the uh, strains at the extreme compression fiber uh, and the tension steel. And it keep iterating for positioning the neutral, the, uh, the inelastic centroid and then it checks for the uh, equilibrium of the forces and it checks after that for the, the, the strain in the concrete doesn't exceed the ultimate strain in the eccentric model and or it checks that, that the steel is within 0.05 and keep increasing the delta P till we hit a point on the interaction diagram and then it asks if a new, new E is needed or new alpha is needed. And uh, before I go to the cases uh, where the, this adjusted curve is, is used, this is a comparison with, with some experimental data, seven cases. Uh, it's taken from, this case is taken from Hagenstedt with the, this is the properties of the column and this is the interaction diagram plotted using uh, the previous uh, procedure and here is a point on the tension control out, lies outside the interaction diagram that is representing uh, conservative and safe. Um, Case. This case too is also for is plotted for alpha equal to 90 and alpha equal to zero and the two points here, the interaction diagram is predicting them very well. Uh, here another case alpha is equal to 26.5 and here also uh, the interaction diagram is very safe uh, compared to the experimental data. Case number four is plotted using, because it's a, a rectangular, uh, it's a square column, it's plotted using the E equation and the CR equations. And we can see that the CR equation is successfully predicting uh, the, uh, the two points on the, in the, on the balance zone. Uh, if we were to just design the interaction diagram using any available model, um, the interaction diagram will be more, having more capacity, more than even the outer one, which is representing an unsafe uh, case. And uh, we, we showed that previously, uh, we compared the, just the two interaction diagram to each other, and some points uh, lies inside the interaction diagram of why using just Mander model as a base of the developing the interaction diagram. Case number five is similar to case number four, and the two points here are also well compared to the interaction diagram. Here we account more for more safety and account for the covers falling while reaching the point zero zero three, and it, which is represented by this 
uh, interaction diagram. Uh, and uh, here the points uh, is uh, the interaction diagram successfully capture the points uh, and um, the, the eccentricity here is similar to each other while the strain rate is different and th this is taken from uh, Scott 1982 paper uh, but the strain rate here is well very very small like 0.000033 uh, for the inner cases while the outer cases was reasonably <coughs> Uh, there. Uh, case number seven is similar and then also the interaction diagram using the CR and accounting for the covers falling is uh, much more accurate in, in capturing the experimental data. Uh, so when we move into the building design, <coughs> this is a case where we selected like 30 uh, stories uh, for a building, and this is a little video showing the proportion of the uh, proportion of the building. So the building we selected is having like three spans, 24 foot uh, by 24 foot uh, also, and uh, we are interested in that column in the lower stories. And also we run the analysis for 30 stories, 60 stories, and 90 stories to show the comparison between among those. Uh, the lateral force or the shear force is neglected in this study since the, always the concept of the tall building is going with uh, designing for shear wall. So the shear wall will basically take the, take the lateral force. So the column is subjected to axial force and two bending moments along the beams. Uh, the case is uh, the concrete has this uh, uh, 150 pound per square foot per cubic foot and it's an office building that has 50 pound per square foot. The beam is 10 by 18, the slab length is 24 by 24 times the slab thickness or the slab thickness is 8 inches. And we have two loading cases. <coughs> the first one we load, uh, we load life load to the two adjacent slab here, while the other two slabs are just exposed to the dead load uh, in order to have um, a critical case uh, for the moment, and then we calculate the moment, uh, the balance moment, and the carryover moment up to the 30 stories, up to the level of the lower column. The other loading case is to load the whole uh, four slabs simultaneously with the dead load plus the live load in order to have a um, critical load of loading. Uh, I mean, like the P would be huge in this case. Then we plotted the, uh, uh, the th for the 30 stories, we plotted the design curve showing the two points, the P and N moment, the, uh, the forces and the moment uh, for the two uh, cases for the two loading cases and we repeat that for 30, 30, 60 stories. So for the 30, and the software that we use for that is K.Column Expert that we developed using the, the analysis, the procedure that I just showed in the first section. So this is the design interaction diagram that shows the two points and the diameter of the column selected is 42 inches having 17 number four bars. While when it comes to just the unconfined interaction diagram, the column is knocked down to 30 inches and 17 number 14, which is similar to the other case, but the diameter of the column is 30 as opposed to the 42. And then we propose to use 75% of the confined curve, and this is used by, uh, or adopt, adopted by Ashto uh, for the extreme event loading uh, for the case of non-redundant structures. So they use 75% of the confined curve. And this is what we use also in our analysis here. And the column is knocked down more, 25, and even the bars is reduced to 15 number 14 bars. When it comes to the 60 stories, it's the diameter is 60, 18 number 18. And for the unconfined, it's 42, 18, number 18 as well. And then for the 75% of the confined curve, the adjusted one is 36, 
inches. And when it's for the mind stories, it's 75 inches, 24 number 18, 52 for the unconfined, 24 number 18 as well, 45, 24 number 18 for the adjusted confined curve. Here the table shows the three cases plotted uh, side by side, 42 inches, 30, 25 for the case of 30 stories, and this is the longitudinal steel, the area, the volume, the core, the area core. And then we, we further uh, plotted what is required uh, by the ACI for the minimum steel ratio, the minimum spiral ratio, uh, rho, rho S, and uh, the values came out to be this. And then we calculate the area required by the steel, or the area required uh, for the spiral ASP, and then determine what is the distance of the uh, SP or the uh, sp spacing. Uh, no, I mean the diameter of the uh, of the spiral itself, and it came out to be 0 0.26, 0 0.26, 0 0.25, 265. Then we selected number three based on these values and re-plot or re-run the analysis to predict that the S, the spacing required for the column is almost two inches. So, and we did the whole thing again for the other three cases. So we re-plotted the, uh, uh, the three cases again by selecting number three. This should be one, one for, yeah, one point for the same spacing uh, for the previous cases, and we readjust the column dimension, so as opposed to 25, we get 28, 39 compared to 36, and 50 compared to 45. So for the for this summing up the area or the amount of the steel, of the concrete needed for lower stories, we f we find out that the by uh, by accounting for 75 percent of the confined curve, we can save up to 55% of the concrete, as it shows up in this uh, case. Uh, so for conclusion, then we predict the, uh, uh, we run the confined analysis uh, for developing uh, the ultimate interaction diagram for circular and rectangular columns, and then the new design criteria that is account that is calling for 75% of the uh, actual interaction diagram is successfully can, if, if followed, can predict, can, uh, can have up to 55% saving in the column size, and not just the column size, also the spiral is saved because of the column size is decreased, so the amount of the steel needed is less, and, uh, and also we have uh, a save in the form uh, work that is needed in during construction and after that, uh, while the, the the building is occupied, we can see that the column is slightly uh, nicer and uh, having a small uh, ratio compared to the uh, other case for the unconfined or for the design curve. Uh, with that, I uh, finish my presentation. Thank you very much. Do we have time for questions? Any questions? Well, the, the slenders of the column, uh, we didn't look at that, but I think we're still in the, uh, in the zone of non-slender column. We're still in the, uh, in the phase of the stock columns uh, cases. So the slenders effect, I think it doesn't have any effect on the, in the, on the analysis. But I think it's a good thing to account for, to in order like to automate it, that uh, have this automatically reproduced, it has to have like some uh, coding or something to account for uh, for the uh, for the slenderness uh, ratio effect. Yeah. And what's the other thing? Thanks.
Thanks. Thanks.